All right. It's time for Caddyshack, Bob. This is an iconic one. And if you're going to do a movie about golf, you better have a foursome. And man, do we have a foursome here today, Bobby. Joining the program yet again, we've got Gooch and we've got Joe Bay. Bob, is there any chance this thing doesn't go off the rails tonight? I think it, I, I hope it does. I'm going to, we're going to press on past that hour, Mark. I know you love keeping that hour in the podcast. That's your job. You like to keep us organized. But if I were to pick, you know, the best foursome to run this podcast, we've got it. I mean, Gooch and Joe Bay, no offense to all of our other guests. They just, we just get a lot of positive feedback. So I'm looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to it all week. Gooch, good to have you here, my man. Great to be here and great opening with the foursome. I like it. Mm. Joe, Joe Bay, what's going on, man? Yeah, as a, as a loyal podcast listener, I did hear you refer to us last week as an iconic foursome. So I, I hope we can live up to that billing. I, I think uh, I think you got the right group here. Uh, what, uh, Bob, uh, one clarification. One doing one thing and one doing the other thing? Yeah, I saw that text from you. I don't necessarily remember what I said, Gooch. You know, I, I'm in a zone when I'm talking. No, Really no idea what I'm talking about. So don't bring that stuff back up. <laughs> Fair enough. He, uh, he blacks out every now and again. Well, look, I think the best place to start is a tweet that came out earlier this week. I saw it. Tom literally sends it to me a second later, and I think it's very apropos for this Caddyshack movie that we're about to go through. Let me read it to you, and then, Tom, I'm going to come to you first, kind of get your opinion. But it says, when I was a kid, Bill Murray was the funniest person in Caddyshack. When I was a teen, it was Chevy Chase. When I was a young man, it was Rodney Dangerfield. But the truth is, it's Ted Knight. So I ask you this, Tommy, who is it? Who is the most funny guy right now? Well, so I struggle a little bit with this because it's always been for me, Al Chervik, right? This is my buddy Wayne. It's always been. However, I've got a couple of Ted Knight scenes that I'm not sure I paid attention to that much growing up that are hilarious. So I'm going to give a 1A and 1B and still say it's Rodney Dangerfield for me but close second with Ted Knight. Wow. I tell you what, that's amazing. So Ty Webb was never one of the funniest. I don't know if it's changed. No. I probably when I, probably when I was younger, it was, it was Carl. It was Bill Murray for sure. Um, but it's been Ty Webb for a while. And I mean, more on hall of fame plaques of iconic, funny characters. This Ty Webb is up there, man. This Ty Webb is up there and his other characters are up there. So it's been Ty Webb for a long time for me, Joe. Bay. I guess maybe I'm uh, I'm just showing my age. I'm I'm considerably older than all of you guys. That's that's clear. But uh God, I love I love Judge Smales. That that he makes me laugh so hard. At the same time, uh as as uh, other podcast listeners will know, I'm a loyal Chevy Chase fan. I would never go against Chevy. I mean, he's 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 a god among men, in my opinion. Chevy Chase is my guy as as well, Joe Bay. He- me and Bob just went and saw Deadpool and Wolverine. We did Deadpool last week, and and I basically surmised that Ryan Reynolds is Chevy Chase 2.0. It's probably why I like Ryan Reynolds. I would agree with uh, Joe Bay and the Judge Smale. I think Tommy even said it. Judge Smales was funnier this time around than I remember, but Ty Webb is my guy. Chevy Chase is my guy. He makes me laugh. The deadpan humor is just unbelievable. A lot of unbelievable quotes, which I'm sure we're going to spend a ton of time on. And I guess my next question, guys, is, Look, the debate about what a great comedy is, I think, changes over time. Like, if you just watch this movie, you don't necessarily laugh out loud as much as you do during something like Step Brothers or Wedding Crashers or Super Bad, even something like that. But it's different. It was a different time. It was kind of the SNL guys coming of age, making these skits. They're actually kind of like trying to tell a story somewhat. But I would say, and maybe Fletch is the only comparable, is this the most quoted movie? 45 some odd years later that just lives on to where if you say the quote or a movie, we're talking about 1980 that you just know exactly what we're talking about. What do you guys think of that? There was quotes in this movie that I didn't know I got from this movie. I call foreigners, fuzzy foreigners, no clue that that was in this movie, no Mm -hmm. clue that that was in this movie. Now I have gone out on a limb and I've said, and I, Mark, I think you agree with me on the Godfathers. That is guys, we're supposed to say that Godfather is the greatest movie of all time. It's just not for me. And then as guys were supposed to say, especially guys that love golf, that Caddyshack is the best comedy of all time. And I've always went out on a limb and said, no, it's not. Um, Here's what I, now it's a top 10 comedy for sure. I think after I watched it, it went up a couple notches for me, but I don't think when we do Anchorman, Wedding Crashers, Tommy Boy, I'm going to have this many pages of notes. 
So it is, it is an incredible comedy for what you just said. The, the way that these quotes have lived on the way that every single person that is our age. And I think younger, I'd, I'd be curious to ask an 18 year old, has he seen Caddyshack yet? We will be saying quotes from this movie until we're dead. And then hopefully Sam and AJ and all of our kids will be saying it till they die, which probably lends itself to it's a, it's a much better comedy and historic comedy that I've, than I've given it credit for. And that's just not peer pressure because you guys are staring at me. It's awesome. I always knew it was awesome, but rewatching it, it's incredible. Really, really good. Joe, I mean, is there a movie you quote more than this? I mean, Fletch is up there. Vacation's up there. Princess Bride even really quotable. What are your thoughts? I'm just happy that Bob is finally coming around and admitting what a great movie this is. It's maybe the only thing that I haven't loved about Bobby since we met. <laughs> I love Caddyshack as much as I did. Uh, I, I mean, I think it. De- I think it depends on the type of people that you hang out with. Uh, I'm a, a, an avid golfer, an enthusiastic golfer at least. So certainly, the people that I hang out with play golf quote this more than anything in the world. Before I was really even a fan of this movie, um, I played golf with a guy who quoted it all the time, and I was like, "This guy is hilarious." And I later learned he was not funny at all. He just he, he was quoting <laughs> a funny movie. Um, yeah, I think, I think I quote this as much as, if not more than any other movie. So Bob's fuzzy foreigner xenophobia aside, <laughs> there are 30, I wrote, and I think I'm wrong. I, I have 36 quotes, 23 of them that are omnipresent, that we all say every day. Not, not even when we golf. Every day that we all say. You, the, we were texting about top 10. I, I say top five. This might be top three of, of all comedies. It, it's an unbelievable movie. And it, it will live on forever and ever and ever. This movie holds up, by the way. I think Al Cervix is a xenophobe, correct? I mean, are, aren't we just, isn't that an assumption there? Isn't, oh, yeah. that why you li- in, Tom, isn't that why you like him so much? We know who he's voting for, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, well, maybe, hey. Not. He, maybe not. He's dead, so we're not really sure who he's going to vote for. You, you're right. I think that kind of sums it up, the iconic nature of this movie that's just lived on, will continue to live on. And you're right. The quotes are said to this day, July 1980, gentlemen, 44 years ago, this thing comes out, directed by Harold Ramis, his debut. Bob, this is the second movie in a row we've done where it's a director's debut. We talked Tim Miller did Deadpool. It was his debut. Now, he didn't do much after that. Harold Ramis did a lot of cool stuff. We did Vacation. Joe Bay, you were on for that. We did that. Groundhog Day, all the analyzed movies. He's, he's a writer on Ghostbusters. So a very, very accomplished guy. But amazing that it's his debut. And I read that he really wasn't fond of it. Years later, he kind of was re- relented that he compromised too much on the movie. He was kind of embarrassed by the golf swings of everybody other than Danny Noonan, who I'm sure we're going to get into, Bob. The golf swings in this movie are quite hilarious. But it's a it's a who's who, right? Chevy Chase, Rodney Dangerfield, Ted Knight, Bill Murray, just unbelievable roles that lived on and on and on. The box office, $40 million, which was not wow. bad. Number 17. But I think in fairness, 1980, golf, not very popular. I mean, that was not like a mainstream type of sport where it's gotten after our guy T.W., came onto the scene. So it's almost like if you made it now, it'd be a bigger hit and it'd be more popular. Maybe that's kind of the happy Gilmore is kind of the modern day version of this, but it did really, really well. 1980 guys, unbelievable movie year. Number one at the box office, Empire Strikes Back, right in my heart swing right there. I don't, I probably saw a movie in the theater before Empire Strikes Back, but I vividly remember seeing Empire Strikes Back in the theater walking out of it and my head just exploded like what Darth Vader's Luke Skywalker spoiler alert his father unbelievable other big movies that year I'm interested if you guys have seen any of these nine to five Dolly Parton Mm -hmm. that was excellent Mm -hmm. how about this how about this for some uh, comedies that year airplane Mm -hmm. (laughs) Smokey and the Bandit and the Blues Brothers what a time to be alive Tom now Joe, Joe Bay said he's older I doubt you're older than Tommy Tommy's like 63 years old Tommy, you probably, you know, you're a young man and this thing came out. You remember seeing any of those movies I just listed in the theater? Yeah, Airplane. Yeah, well, in the theater, uh, well, first of all, is there going to be a podcast for Smoking the Bandit? You're on. I don't, 
Okay, you're on. Just, it. just literally, literally in the same category as a movie like this. I mean, it just Smoking the Bandit is 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 an unbelievable movie. Um, I remember Airplane being like one of the first risky movies I was allowed to see. Um, this movie I did not even see in the theaters. We actually had a cousin who was I don't know. She's about ten or fifteen years older than me and my sister, and her and her husband used to let us stay over and we'd go visit them in Ohio. And they had so I probably didn't see this movie until like nineteen eighty one. They had a beta and or beta VHS beta. They had a beta and we, we used to watch it over and over. And obviously as a 13 year old boy, I watched it for the obvious reasons. Um, it, it, you know, um, so I remember seeing airplane. I assume I saw that in the theaters. I assume I saw smoking the band in the theaters, blues brothers. Uh, I, I don't recall, but I definitely saw it. Joe, orange, you're the orange, orange, orange. Thoughts, yeah. thoughts on 1980 at the yeah, box. Well, office. This movie came out, uh, the month I was born, July of 1980. Um, so I didn't see it in theaters. Uh, and I can tell you, for my, for my 40th birthday, I said I'm going to see the top 40 movies from 1980 uh, all in one weekend, just like binge them all. So I have seen every single one of those. Um, and I would be happy to appear on any podcast that features any of those movies. I think the movie right before it was Cheech and Chong's next movie. The one right after it in the box office was, gosh, what was it? I'm drawing a blank on it now. But, of course, I've seen them all. So, happy to be on any of the podcasts. Oh, it was wow. Friday the 13th. Uh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. So, so feel free to get me on anytime. I'm happy to discuss any of them. Yeah. Joe, Bay, this, Joe Bay, your 40th wasn't that long ago. I think I went to your 40th birthday party. When was this binge <laughs> of 40 movies, and are you serious, and why didn't you call me? It started that night after the party uh, and went on through the weekend. <laughs> All like right. a, that was I a like Rain Man performance he had there. So, look, I would normally just say this. So I'll ask you, Joe Bay, since you are a 1980 guru, any idea what won Best Picture that year? I don't know if it was in the top 40, so maybe you didn't see it. Robert Redford was in it. Ordinary uh, People. Ordinary uh, People. That's yeah, I didn't give me a chance to answer, but yes, of course I did. <laughs> It's a big movie. And then I'm sure a movie that was on that where the guy won Best Actor. You know who won Best Actor that year, 1980? Famous actor, famous movie. Yeah. I'll, I'll let Gooch take it because I know he knows it too. <laughs> uh, I, would, I would have guessed Dustin Hoffman Tootsie, but no. It's De Niro and Raging Bull. So look, oh. 1980? I mean, Bob, we did 1999 a couple of you know months ago, I guess, at this point. 1980 shocked me. It's a really good Movies in there with Empire Strikes Back leading the way. Guys, I want to run you through a little Bill Murray. Now, typically, Bob and I will do this. I'll pick out somebody and just be like, hey, look at this run that this guy went on. It's always neat to look back at some of these. Uh, now, we did Chevy Chase when we did Vacation, and Rodney Dangerfield didn't really do a whole heck of a lot of movies, and Ted Knight was really more of a TV guy. So Bill Murray, just one of the all-timers, 77 to 80, he's on SNL. He's not one of the OGs, Chessy, Chevy Chase and Belushi and Aykroyd and a couple of those guys are the OGs, comes on a little bit later. And I guess that sparked some sort of rivalry with him and Chevy Chase. They don't really like each other. Later in this movie, it's the only time they ever appeared on screen together. I did not know that. But out of that, he gets 79. He does Meatballs, 80 Caddyshack, 81 Stripes. A lot of those, he's kind of the same guy. Then 84 Ghostbusters. Off to the moon. I mean, the guy's like one of the biggest movie stars on the planet. Does a sequel a couple years later, then kind of transitions into more of a serious actor, so to speak. What about Bob? Pretty good. And then Groundhog Day, which I love a lot. I keep trying to get Bob to put that on the list, and we're going to do that. I really like that. But Bill Murray, Joe Bay. I mean, where does he sit in your SNL Hall of Fame? What do you think of his early comedic stuff? And then he kind of transitions into kind of a more serious actor. Yeah, huge fan, huge fan. Uh, I mean, Meatballs, another just absolute classic. Uh, you mentioned that. I love that. Uh, the guy's a movie star. I love the stories about people encountering Bill Murray, like when he just shows up at weddings or sits down with people at, at dinner. I think it's Charleston, South Carolina, where he, where he spends a lot of time. But everybody's got a great story about Bill Murray just wandering in and, and hanging with them. And, and I'm, I'm so jealous of that. He seems like such a great guy to be around. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's the best. 
I didn't love him. I mean, we can get into this more. I didn't love him in this. Uh, I just thought, I know the role was based on like this honker character that he had from Second City. Uh, you know, it's it's fine. Like, there's parts of it that I like. There's parts of it that I don't like. But the guy's, the guy's an absolute legend. He's no Chevy Chase. No, he, he, he is no Chevy Chase. Yeah, the part, I'm sure we'll get into it. Do you like it? Do you not? Bobby, you know what fueled a lot of these guys back in the day and apparently kept the, kept the lights on on this set? I'm sure you read that. I do. It's a little Colombian Bam Bam. I think that's what, what had everybody fueled, correct? <laughs> it, was. it was. It was apparently <laughs> everywhere on set. It was another movie. I think it was a vacation, Bob, I think we did, where it was just basically everyone was all coked out. And it just seemed to be a theme of kind of that late 70s early 80s and these guys just just going through there. Bobby, where do you stand on Bill Murray? You know, it's kind of, I know you're you're a big Adam Sandler guy. You're kind of like the half generation right behind us. And Adam Sandler, he kind of reminds me of Bill Murray a little bit where he's kind of got this shtick that he kind of does through a lot of his movies and Murray kind of does it, which I don't tend to like a bunch. Where do you come down on him? Yeah, he's not up there for me. Obviously, he's got some iconic characters, but when I think of best co- comedic actors of all time, he he really isn't up there. And when we get to Hall of Fame plaques, this is this is it, and it's kind of a goofy character. I mean, some of the best uh, some of the best scenes of all time, but no, I'm not as high on Bill Murray as other might other people might be. Bobby, I imagine well, I don't know. Did they even have the Foreign Film Awards back in July of 1980 to even review this thing? I mean, did it do? Okay, you're sort of our international guru when it comes to this stuff. It got one award, Mark. It got one award. Most of these films we're doing have just 50 awards because it's all over. You know how I like the foreign press. But um, this got one award. It's called a stinker. It got one stinker. And it got most annoying accent for a female. Maggie, oh, thanks for nothing. Thanks for nothing. (laughs) I mean, it's the only award the whole film got. Now, in 1980, there wasn't as many awards, but what award? Poor Maggie. I love her accent, but she got the worst. She got the worst accent award. Um, Rodney Dangerfield, not a, a a trained actor. He's a comedian. So they told the story about like, hey, he would they would yell action, and Rodney would just sit there. He wouldn't he wouldn't do anything. I mean, Rodney, <laughs> action, and he brings them over to him, you know, and he's like. You know, Rodney, when I say action, it's time for you to go do your, your deal. He goes, oh, you mean do my bit? He says, why don't you just tell me, Rodney, do my bit? And so every time instead of action, if Rodney Dangerfield's in the scene, he says, Rodney, do your bit. And he just is off like a racehorse doing his Rodney Dangerfield. Danny Noonan stayed away from golf for 25 years after this film. Yeah. He said he just every time after the film he would try to golf, everybody would watch. Everybody would be yelling Noonan in his backswing. He just was soured to the game of golf. Too much, too much pressure. Brian Doyle Murray, writer on the film, Bill Murray's brother. I didn't really know that. When I looked at his picture, I didn't actually even know that that was Bill, Millie, Bill uh, Murray's brother. Denunzio and Lacey dated for two years after this. Mm. I mean, how many guys were taking a run at Sweet Miss Lacey and Denunzio got her, although he was, the, you know, he's the Italian gets a girl and the Italian, it's another, a tale. Another story. It is a tale as old as time. The Italian gets the girl. Um, there's some unintentional comedy here. I'm going to wait. Cause I, Tommy, you texted about it. We'll wait to talk about some of the things that happen in the background of these scenes are, are just, I mean, hilarious. Um, the last Ooh. thing I'll say is I've never seen the beginning of this movie ever. Ever. When the movie started and they're in Danny Noonan's house, didn't even know what movie I was watching. I've never seen the first scene of this. Also watched from Prime, pretty obvious, Vacation, Animal House, Ferris, Tommy Boy, Stripes, Airplane, Blues Brothers, all those others. So obviously a lot of good good movies like this. What other notes does anybody have? Gooch? Uh, so, so a couple things. So one, you were talking about Carl earlier in the movie. Do you, you guys know, even though I know it was a character from Second City, Joe, that actually Carl was originally supposed to be a wordless character. And then when, they ca- yeah, then when they cast him, Harold Ramis would just kind of say, okay, here's the scene, including the famous cannonball scene where he's with Ty Webb um, in his place. Um, and he just said, go for it. The third writer on the movie... Douglas Kinney 
is Dwayne the Stork Storkman in Animal House. So do you guys remember Stork? He actually <laughs> also wrote Animal House, and he's also one of Al Chervik's dinner guests. Um, uh, at you know somebody stepped on a duck that uh, that night. Uh, also, Harold Ramis. Pause. We were talking about Harold Ramis movies. So he did all the movies that we know, Stripes Vacation, Ghostbuster, Caddyshack. But do you remember, because you and I should remember it, because you're the oldest and I'm the second oldest. Um, he did Heavy Metal Fake in 1981. News. Do you remember Heavy Metal? I don't. That screwed, it was a screwed up, really bizarre. If you guys ever want to watch the most bizarre movie, it's a bizarre biker movie set in the future, cartoon biker kind of sex movie, kind of weird. And Harold Ramis um, did that. And then the last thing I'll leave with is, Kenny Loggins, let's go. Mm-hmm. Footloose, Caddyshack, Over the Top, Top Gun. I mean, come on. It's actually one of my favorite things about this movie is the first 30 seconds where it's the slow part of I'm All Right and they're showing the golf course and the sprinklers and the music and the humming is just bringing you in. I think it's one of the cooler entries into a movie. The, the Kenny Loggins thing, I mean, Footloose is not only one of my favorite movies, but also my favorite song and my favorite uh, dance. So, yeah. I love it. Um, one thing just to, to tag on the Gooch on the Animal House thing. So the the only line that that guy had, that Doug Kenny has in Animal House is one of the best lines in Animal House. When he goes, what the hell do you expect us to do, you moron? Which, <laughs> I love that. My, my, for many of my 10-year-old son is blonde. That's all I'm going to get there. That he just loves it. Um, so I think that was, uh, was funny. Um I think Bob and I did research in, in some of the same places. We had a lot, a lot of those same factoids, so I'm sure you've heard this one. But um, I thought it was interesting that Spalding, the guy, the kid who played Spalding, never acted again. Or he, he was huh? the other two other movie credits, but they're both Caddyshack, uh, like retrospectives or something like that. He's a real girl up in Boston now. So uh, I mean, the kid was an incredible actor. I can't believe he didn't have a uh, a future on the screen. But uh, yeah, all uh, all good stuff. Oh, well, I, I guess one other one talking about the Nunzio. The stud who uh, who ended up with Lacey, uh, also Schwartz in Porky's, another great. 80s oh yeah. Um, so he's like the prototypical Italian in Caddyshack, and then he's like the the Jewish kid in uh, in Porky's. Uh, I mean, Joe Bay, Joe, Joe Bay, we pride ourselves on accurate facts. We pride ourselves on truth. There is no way that your favorite song ever is Footloose. We can't just get yourself on track for the rest of the podcast here. You can't just uh, be saying stuff like that. Uh, you and I have obviously never been to a wedding together. Because when, <laughs> when Footloose comes on in a wedding, that wedding is is uh, about to turn into a real party when Joe Bay starts singing. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, wow. Hey, on that hey, Mark, note. Mark, one more. Filmed in Florida, but supposed to be in Nebraska. Which also really throws off the boat scene, the fact that it's supposed to be in Nebraska. <laughs> yes. Yes. Anybody ever been? It's, uh, what was it, in Davie, Florida, Davey. Rolling Link, Rolling Hills Golf Rolling Course? Hills. Anybody ever gone by there? It'd be great to go play that thing if it still exists. That would no be kidding. that would be pretty fun. All right. Look, we could spend all day on uh, the intro. We're going to get into scenes now. What I've decided I'm going to do here, I've picked the best scene. I know exactly what it is. I'll be interested to do. see if one of you can guess the correct scene all right so i'm gonna roll the dice tom gooch you're first up what do you think is the best scene in caddyshack so so i jump ship at hong kong and i make my way over to tibet <laughs> you want me to do the whole thing i'm happy to <laughs> you, you Go for it. Yes. It's, it's, it's your show that's right so i jump ship in hong kong and i make my way over to tibet and i get so my favorite part i'll come to a minute and they got get on as a looper at a course over in the Himalayas. Uh, a looper? Uh, a looper, you know, a caddy, a looper, a jock, which is, by the way, is, that's my favorite part when he says a jock. Pro, pro jock. <laughs> pro, well, so I tell him, I'm a pro jock. <laughs> and who do you think they give me? The Dalai Lama himself, the 12th son of the Lama. Uh, the flowing robes, the grace, bald, striking. So I'm on the first tee with him. I give him the driver. He hauls off and whacks one. Big hitter, the llama, <laughs> long into a ten thousand foot crevice, right at the base, right at the base of the glacier. Do you know what the llama says? And this is my favorite part about this scene: is when he corrects himself when he says "gunga galunga," and then he goes "gunga gunga lagunga." <laughs> so we finished the 18th. He's gonna stiff me, and I say, "Hey, llama, 
hey, Llama, how about a little something for the, you know, for the effort, you know? And he says, oh, uh, there won't be any money, but when you die on your deathbed, you'll receive total consciousness. So I got that going for me, which is nice, which, by the way, is quote number one, because we all yes. say, so I got that going for me, which is nice. Yes. Yes. Did I win, it's, Mark? Well, we're going to find out. I mean, uh, okay. look, no, what's funny no I'll, t- I'll tell you right now, you did not win. It's not the best scene. It's incredible. It's not the best scene. And he's okay. got a pitchfork. He's got a pitchfork up against the guy's neck as he's going through it. That's incredible. Joe Bay, what do you, how do you top that? Yeah, that's so so well done, Gooch, and you nailed it right on the head there with it. The, when he goes back and corrects himself on the Goonga Galunga is, is genius. I mean, he's like improvising, and yet he still has the wherewithal to go back and say that, that's just uh, God. That's comedy at its at its best. Um, I've got a, a list here, Mark, and I don't think any of them is going to be your favorite because I I you know I, I'm a I'm a huge fan, and I know your tastes are a little different than mine. Um, I'm going to go out on a, a, a limb and say it's uh, it's caddy day at the pool, the the duty scene. Uh, it doesn't seem like it would be your favorite. Uh, it's just so many dumb gags all thrown together, and and they all just work so perfectly. Uh, maybe you know I'm taking a flyer here and thinking maybe you're a sucker for a good poop gag. It's a great it's a great scene. Caddy pool day is incredible. They get what is it five minutes? It says on the clock one. <laughs> 110 to 115, the caddies, the duty. That's iconic, right? The baby Ruth, the whole thing. And a, a, a line I had forgotten about is he's like, get out of the pool, get out of here. And the little girl goes, you shave your ass. <laughs> that was like, nice. Why is she saying that? I don't, I don't even know what's going on. Great scene. I, I, you guys I'll, I'll, I'll ask it now. I mean, this is, this is a Bob's big question, but I got plenty of them. Why does Caddy Day just basically turn into a riot? I mean, th- it is just pandemonium. People lifeguard stands being flown over people getting tackled why is that every caddy day you would think if it seems like that wasn't the first time they did that so you would assume that once that happened once no more caddy day no more caddy day i I was i just watched that that scene today and i was thinking the same thing and i was thinking to a buddy of mine who used to caddy at eastlake and admittedly he's a wild man but he told me when they would have a cat like they didn't have a caddy day or 15 minutes in the pool, but, you know, they opened up the course and have a caddy tournament or whatever. And he was like, it was mayhem. Absolutely <laughs> So, I mean, it's probably an exaggeration of, of the, the duty of the pool. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think those caddies like to get loose. Especially back it, then. Especially back is then. Is that kind of quote number two, by the way? So whenever you guys go to the pool, whenever we go to the pool and it's a hot mess, July 4th, Memorial Day, Labor, I always walk in to my wife and say, it's like caddy day at the pool. Yeah. Do you guys not say that? Yeah, it's not even a quote. Yeah, it's just part of the vernacular. Yes, yeah. Cra- okay. A crazy time at the pool is caddy day. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. No, it's when it's when Ty goes into into Carl's house. That's it. and if that's not yeah, that if that's the best scene. I mean, just he knows me the, too well. The quotes that come out of that is this your place? This is really, really awful. Uh, no, have a seat. Well, no, I wouldn't want to stick to any. I want to stick to anything. Yeah, you know, this is a, a, a piece of grass. This is a, a grass I've been working on. It's a, a hybrid. It's a Kentucky bluegrass and a and a, a feather bent and a n- Northern California sesame oil. Sesamia. The good thing about this, you can play 36 in the afternoon and then just get stoned to bejesus. And then he's like, you know, where you are off there off Briar, yeah, to pool, pond. Ooh, pool pond would be good. Be good. Well, pond, pond, would be, pond would be good for you. I mean, I just, if you got to the first two quotes, Tommy, I just used up three, four, five, six, and seven. Just, They're on the just, list. In, that, just in that one scene. And then it ends with cannibal come in. I mean, is there any time... I don't take many shots anymore, but if we're taking a shot, it's cannibal coming, cannibal coming, <laughs> chase it, chase it, chase it, cannibal coming. So can That's I ask a question thing. about cannibal? So first of all, Boz, I noticed you printed out your notes. And is that the first for you to print out your notes? Oh, you no, it's handwritten. Down. They're not printed. Uh, uh, so, so whenever I have said cannonball, I don't know if I, I always think of Caddyshack. Do we all feel like that's when we got cannonball whenever you say cannonball to a friend, like when they, in the old days when we would do a beer bong or something like that, and you say can't hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. How so, many points do I win, Mark? You win one point. So Bob knows me too well. He knew it had to include Chevy Chase. And Bob and I with the pool and the pond and the briar have used that forever. And the cannonball coming is great. What's funny, Bob and I used to do it wrong. We used to say you live over there off Briar. Bob, what would you say? 
Yeah, one. one. Not one. Uh-huh. It's not uh-huh. one. It's two. I tell you what, a, cl- a close second, though, involves Ty. It has to. And it's Ty and Lacey. That's and it's two. that. And that's oh. number two. You know, I was born to love you. I was born to let your face. And then he, when she takes the shot and she does the salt, the lemon, and then the shot, he snorts it, squirts the lemon, and just chucks the shot behind him. And then the whole love scene that they're having, I guess, was all improvised. And Lacey hated it. She was really uncomfortable to have her top off. He's He, he starts the scene with the Perrier that he pours the old Perrier in there <laughs> and, and it blows, blows off the top. I mean, it's a, it's, it's an incredible scene. Yeah. That's, that's, that's scene number two. So I get two points, I think. Two points, two points. Yeah. And I would say the only one you guys didn't mention that would have been number three for me. You want to talk about it kind of quotes. It's the round of golf with the Bishop when the rain is coming down. And I don't think the heavy stuff's going to come down for a while that gets said in a round of golf whether it's raining or not, God forbid there's a sign of rain that's getting yes. said on a golf course every time. And it's preceded by the Cinderella story. It's in the hole, which again gets said over and over and over again. So great job by all of you guys. Look, Thanks, let's course. just get it started. Let's get the quotes going. There are so many to your point, Tom, I think you said you had 33 or 35. We've probably already done 10. I mean, there's 40 or 50 quotes that go in there. So I think the only way to do this is a draft, fellas. I'm going to let you guys draft, see what I think is the best on all this job. Roll the dice. Joe Bay, you've got the first pick. Now, do we want to do the quotes that have already been said? Or do you got to go, do you got to dig deeper? Do you got to go beyond what we've done? Probably. Because there's still so many more to go. Let's, Let's go to ones that we haven't said, Joe Bay. Rip okay. off one for me. Uh, my first quote is, uh, is, is Chevy and Danny early in the movie walking down the uh, – walking down the fairway and trying to figure out what's going on with Danny. You take drugs, Danny? Every day, sir. Good. Every day. So what's the problem? <laughs> Just Yeah, they, they look they, good camaraderie between Chevy and uh, Danny. Danny Noonan. Tommy, you're second up. It, th- so here's the weird thing. I say this all the time, and I have no friend with this name, but I say all the time, this is my buddy Wang. No offense. <laughs> Like I want every pro shop I walk into, the whoever's with me. This is my guest, Wang. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I really do. I can vouch for that. I've been on the receiving end of being called Wang. I mean, Rodney Dangerfield's entrance to this movie is he's coming in at 150 miles an hour and doesn't yeah. stop. Uh, great entrance by him. Great quote, Bobby. Yeah, I think it's oh, Billy, 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 Billy. I mean, yeah. if you need a putt and you need to talk to that putter, it's oh, Billy, 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 Billy. It's a good one. Where do you? Where would you rank? Be the ball on the golf course? No, 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 no. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I mean, you obviously, right? are you part of this draft, Mark? I didn't yeah. think you were part of this draft. I thought it was. Oh, just, yeah, just, just, just throwing it out there. You could still we'll get to it. it. I'm just commentary. Mark, we got right. notes. We won't miss it. <laughs> Back. Roger, Roger Goodell doesn't get a draft pick, Mark. It's he not doesn't. how it works. He doesn't. He doesn't. Joe, but you're okay. up. What's the next one? Uh, the, the next one, uh, this one I use on the golf course all the time because I'm terrible, is the, the hand games uh, folks. When, <laughs> uh, when when somebody hits a ball, like, it's like peach, hun. And Absolutely. then when you just fire one straight in the water, oh, golly, I'm hot today. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Havocamp. Mrs. Havocamp. Yeah, that's incredible. I'm going to win right now, even though I still love Wang. Uh, yeah. I, I just, I just, I just love, I love the etiquette of that whole place. Everybody just screaming as he's putting. <laughs> just screaming as he's putting. I'll do some Al Cervic here. This is the worst hat I've ever seen. What, do you get a free bowl of soup? Oh, it looks good on you, though. And then Smales just slams the hat down. <laughs> You know, the Noonan thing is kind of funny because they also are saying miss it. Over time, Noonan just became an anagram, oh, miss it, right? It's correct. kind of funny how that just kind of morphed into that because there's more miss it, miss it, miss, and then there's some guys just yelling out his name. It's kind of funny how that morphed into it. It's like a jinx. Noonan yeah. is a jinx. That's that's what it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, anytime I play golf, anytime I go to a snack bar, anywhere, I want to hit it. I'll achieve it. I want to hit <laughs> yeah, the, 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 he, he's he is so he is so good. I, I agree. You guys might be uh, might be swaying my swaying my thoughts here. 
the fact that we're laughing and none of us are the actors saying these quotes is, I think, awesome. And, and have heard these things a thousand have, times and they're yeah. still funny. Yeah, yeah. you're right. So I use this all the time with actually not just my kids, with everyone. And I think I'd get the only quote with no actual words. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Mm, How mm, great is that? Is a quote everyone uses. Mm, mm, yeah. mm, mm, mm. All the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> what about gambling is illegal in Bushwood and I never slice? I mean, it is. we can keep going on and on, Mark. These are quotes that are just non, you know, and that's all she wrote. I didn't even know that was from this movie. And that's all she wrote. I mean, that's a, a, a quote that is used all the time. I have one from, uh, from the same scene that I, I said earlier. This was like kind of a subtle one that made me laugh when uh, Chevy keeps calling Danny by the wrong name. And then he goes, thank <laughs> like you, Betty. And Danny responds and goes, it's Denny, sir. And so he pronounces it wrong. And then Kevin goes, oh, Danny. I, I like didn't, I never noticed that before. I just love it. Another one we always use. Somebody step on a duck? Yeah. 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 All the time. The world, the world needs time. ditch diggers. The world needs ditch diggers too. Right, yeah, from, right from your boy Smales. So what is the test called? I had to actually, I kept rewinding it. To, the test is called the Cooter Preference Test. <laughs> <laughs> and i and i do think we all use uh tanks for nothing danny because we four oh. use it on our text string and i also always say to my kids how about a fresca and they have yeah. no idea what i'm talking about yeah and they oh, do their hair oh, oh tanks for nothing <laughs> <laughs> uh, then you ain't getting no coke four cokes what are you a diabetic <laughs> oh, I, think I, was. I know this is a uh, this, we like to keep it clean on this podcast so I apologize if this one's a little over the top but uh, when when the, when the plane almost hits uh, Al Cervic's boat he goes I almost got head from Amelia Earhart. <laughs> it makes no sense at all. Man. It's hilarious. Yeah. Hey, your boat scratched my anchor. Hey. The last one. This is just. This is just. Yeah. Exactly. This is just Chevy Chase being sarcastic when, when they play the first nine holes and they're down by eight. They're eight down after nine or something like that. And Rodney Dangerfield is just like, hey, I don't know what's going on. And Chevy's just like, you, you, you're not good. You stink. <laughs> Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I, think, I think that's it. I think that's it. Don't sell yourself short. You're a tremendous slouch. I can't believe right. I didn't say that one. Yeah, you Did haven't anyone... done the, how do you measure yourself against other golfers? Just a few of them. That might come up in some other. Some other. That yeah. just shows you. We spent, I don't know, 20 minutes going through quotes, and there's still more. It's it's literally the entire script. It's incredible. We, all right, I'm sure more stuff will come up. Holds up will be the next category. I love doing it with these movies that are really – old. Bob and I just did Deadpool. It's only eight years old. It's kind of hard to realize what holds up. I think we've proven that whoever wrote the screenplay here, I don't know if it was Ramus. I know he directed it, but if he wrote one, I think Bob said it was Bill Murray's brother, one of the writers. I mean, great job on you that all of these quotes have lasted uh, so long. So Joe Bay, we're going to start with you. A couple things that have held up over the last 44 years. Uh, number one to me, gambling on golf. I mean, yeah. God, I love to gamble and I love to golf. And you put those two things together and it's just, it, it's heaven. Uh, and when you play, was, play golf with someone that doesn't gamble, it's just, it, it's so off-putting. It's, uh, it's, it's strange. Gambling on golf is, is the best. Um, Teddy Loggins, we already talked about. I mean, those songs are just, 80s songs in general, eh, you know, there's, there's some that are great. There's some that are not. Teddy Loggins holds up. Um, Al Cervix golf bag. <laughs> that was so revolutionary then to think about uh, like a stereo in the golf bag. And now everybody listens to music on the course, right? You know, we, it's a, we kind of watch TV on the course. Uh, but he's got the laser putter. He's got the remote control with the ejection things. Like we'll have that at some point pretty soon. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that golf bag is, is just incredible. Those are, those are uh, the other the other one that I think holds up is just the, the caddies just getting the short end of the stick that they get 15 minutes in the pool. And just, you know, it's, it's, it's still the same, you know, they, they still get, they still get screwed. Yeah. So in the very first scene, 
Cheerios play a prominent role when Danny's at his house. Cheerios still hold up. Uh, golf and country club life, like it or not, it still holds up. Rolls Royces still hold up. We'd all take that. It's a 1963 Rolls Royce, and we'd all take that car now. And then naming your boat seafood. And let me tell you why it holds up. So we, uh, we're we building a lake property right now, and we've got to buy a boat. And I just told my wife the other day, I want to name it seafood. <laughs> and, she, and she's like, why? <laughs> It now that boat has to be called seafood. Now, yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we, I really do want to name it seafood. I re, before we ever say agreed that to do this, et cetera, et cetera. Those, those are, are good ones. Those are good <laughs> ones. I had, I had a lot, of, I had a lot of those. Although I have it in my notes that Cheerios hold up. I don't know what Cheerios are. Are Cheerios mini like churros? What's a Cheerio, dude? You said Chevy like three times. Move on. <laughs> hey, I, I, I actually. I've got an issue with Cheerios holding up. We we eat Honey Nut Cheerios in this house, and the other day somebody bought plain Cheerios, and everybody was like, "Who the hell eat plain Cheerios?" But don't we you do. just dump a butt? I remember eating Cheerios and just dumping so much sugar on it that you would scoop the bottom of the cereal bowl and just have that sugar in it. Oh, it was amazing. I don't know why I stopped. I don't know why I stopped with the amount of sugar I put on. My parents were not watching how much why didn't i just put more like why i always love this why didn't i just put more why didn't i just put more and more sugar on those cheerios we were only allowed two scoops <laughs> but those were some keeping the teaspoons i can tell you yes. yes they were you know i tell you what you know we've had some great what holds up you know we've had lily lily i think in princess bride said love holds up um kevin lahan on independence day said God, I think holds up. I mean, those are great one. What holds up is golf. Golf holds up. Golf will never not be cool. Now, movies about golf, I don't know. There's not a big sample size of them, but golf holds up. Great comedies hold up. Bookies hold up. Are, are there's? I have a friend in Macon. He loves to gamble. He has a bookie. Explain to me what is the need for a bookie nowadays? Can't you just bet anywhere you want on the internet? What? Why is there a? Are there any bookies? Mark, is there any bookies? Still. I would think FanDuel has completely put that, you know, out of yeah. business. DraftKings, that that market to actually be in a bookie is probably, although who knows, might still be out there. But I would think the the internet has killed it. The, the advantage to a bookie nowadays is playing on credit. So, mm-hmm. athletic. So you can. When I had a bookie, I used to settle mm-hmm. up once once a quarter with them. But that was back in the nineties. I'd settle up once a quarter with them. So caddies hold up. It doesn't matter if you're playing Chastain Park, where Joe Bay and I live. Uh, if you're playing and somebody else is carrying your bag and you're walking down the fairway, it's incredible. It's incredible. There's absolutely, absolutely nothing like it. Sucking in your stomach when you're at the pool and a hot <laughs> chick walks by. <laughs> I don't know what shape. I don't know what shape I would need to be in to not suck my stomach in. I mean, even if I have one percent body fat. The stomach is being stuck in a cash jar for a college fund like that. That's pretty cool. I mean, nowadays it can't, it's just too much, too much money, too much money to do that. And then having a ton of kids and it just working out, right. We're all worried about money. I'm sure we're all worried about money and we're trying to retire and this and that. And we're like, we can't have any more kids. Just have a bill. You know, we have friends that have a billion kids and somehow it all works out. Somehow it all works out. So I think that's it. That's all that holds up for me. Big fella. Sorry, boss. Just if you have, if you have that many kids, you can only have one bathroom. That's yeah. correct. Correct. Yeah, that was that was tricky at the beginning of that movie, which Bob had never seen. Apparently, you guys nailed just about all. I was just check, check, check. The only ones that you guys didn't mention, I'll just give them another plug. Chevy Chase holds up. It it just he's going to work in a movie. And the other thing, Danny Noonan's golf swing, incredible. Bob, I'm sad to hear that he ran away from the game. That was he was about the only guy on there. That could really move it. Just smooth, slippery, just backswing, follow through. The guy really looked like he knew what he was doing. All right, questions. It's probably going to be a bunch of those from this movie. You've hinted at a few of them. Uh, Joe Bay, start us off. Um, well, if I could just backtrack for a minute, because I'd like to give the, the uh, not just this book, but the fact that I read books a plug. Caddyshack by Chris <laughs> Shannon. Um, 
You mentioned books hold up. Joby, books hold up. We're on to the next category. Books hold up. I get it. I do. I love reading. But it points out that Danny Noonan lied about being a golfer, which I couldn't believe with that silky swing. I've golfed for 35 years and my swing sucks. And that guy is an actor <laughs> and was able to pull off that swing. That's that's amazing. Absolutely incredible. I, I love that. That that holds up. You know sure. what Joe Bay, you know what holds up? Your golf swing. You got a good golf swing. Don't you mm. don't sell yourself short. You're a tremendous slouch. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, um, I measure myself against other golfers by height. So <laughs> correct. Like that. Uh, Joe saw. The only thing that I had questions, uh, it's a perfect movie, so so very very few questions was I think Bob referenced this before, but when Danny tells his dad he had four, four or five Cokes lunch, that's too many Cokes. That's too many I, I Cokes. Just, yeah, I just, I mean, he's a slim and and, uh, and tri- fit guy too. Like five full gas Cokes at lunch, I don't think so. No, I, think so. I agree. I, I agree. Know. I think the only thing saving them, if you notice, the Coke bottle, I think, was kind of more that miniature Coke bottle, not the just jugs. That we're drinking now. We used to be a proper nation. They had proper sized yeah. Coke bottles back in the eighties. It was like a Coronita. It was like a Coronita, but with yeah. Coke. Yeah, okay. Kind of. All right. All right. Coconita. Coke Coconita. <laughs> Gooch, what do you got? I have, I, I've got like nine questions, but four pressing questions. <laughs> Question number one. Where does Danny live? Is that a halfway house? Is that an orphanage? What the hell is it that there are so many kids in that house? Right? It's a good it's, just, it's a good Irish Catholic house where they just pump out kids. We used okay. to be a proper we used to be a proper nation. Okay, the book is based on the Murray family and they had what eight or nine kids living in the same house. Right? They did have a bunch of kids. Okay. We get the answer. Does anyone else think it's weird in the very first scene when Danny's riding into Bushwood and two women on horseback ride right by the clubhouse? <laughs> It's it's filled with rich people. Rich people okay. dr- rich people ride horses. I can't believe in this this <laughs> mansion you're building on that private lake up there with your own private boat, you're not going to have people on horses walking by your house. Uh, oh, I will. That wasn't the question, though. <laughs> All right. Qu- question number three. Is it weird that Porterhouse is giving a massage in the middle of the locker room and then he goes from buffing the extra wax off Judge Smales' shoes? No. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah, you answer, you, you're, you're right. I've got – is this really a nice course? Like the condition of this place? That's that's the question. In the, that's the, the question. room. I, I agree with you, Tom. There's not. They, it should have been nicer. Like they just yeah. kind of didn't really pull it together with that. I don't. I don't want to step it, on toes, but let's go with this thought here a little bit, Mark and Gooch. We'll come back to you. I'm sorry. Yeah. What is the Atlanta? I know Gooch. You don't know the courses. What's the Atlanta equivalent of this course? I don't think it's that exclusive. No, I'm not. This cool. isn't. Well, Joe Bay, what's the what's the Atlanta comp to Bushwood Country Club? On the condition of the greens, <laughs> the horses wandering around randomly around the course, and massages being given uh, just sort of willy nilly anywhere. The it's caddy's fun. not the caddy's not wearing sleeves. There's not an outfit or a it's dress code. Chastain Park National, which is my <laughs> own course. Uh, Thirty dollars a month to be a member there and play for free after two p.m. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's not great. It's not no. great. Yeah, go ahead, Tommy. Sorry. And then my last question: Doesn't Judge Smales get hitting getting hit in the nuts warrant him probably going to the hospital? <laughs> but then we wouldn't have the rest hurt. of the movie. Yeah. Yes. Then we okay. then we wouldn't That's have the rest it. of the movie. Those are my pressing questions. So Lacey shows up to a golf round with her grandfather with no bra on. <laughs> like, what is going on here? More on Hall of Fame plaques for just tr- dirty tramps. Um, the golf the golf scholarship opens up because the guy before him died of anxiety. Totally missed that the first thousand times I seen this. The golf scholarship was open because the guy a, a high school kid died of anxiety. That's not great. Joby, I see you laughing. You thought that was funny too as well, correct? I he choked on his own vomit. His own vomit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, so they're, they're, Ty is playing with Al Cervix, and they're just getting crushed. He gets hit. He gets hit with the ball. He goes, oh, my arm. And they replace him with the best golfer in the entire movie. And everybody's just okay with this. Smales is just okay with this. There's no way Smales, who's a judge, is going to just 
I mean, we argue for 15 minutes about handicaps. There's no way they're up eight and they say, okay, Danny, you can play. Very, very strange. Along that, why does he owe him 80 grand? So the bets keep going back and forth. Al and, and Ty Webb are down 80 grand. And he says double or nothing, he makes it. That putt was not, that putt was, if it won, like, why does he owe him 80 grand? Am I missing where the bets went here, Mark? Joe, Joe Bay, you're the gambler. Where do the bets go? Do you know? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I actually have an answer for that. Because okay. I do this when you and I play golf with the, the people that we play golf with, uh, who, we, who we have admitted many times, we, have, we never know what the bet is. We never know what's happening. Just- yeah. Wait till the new game you play. I can't even tell you the rules. It's unbelievable. I don't even know what's going on in this betting game. I do know I lost $240 last time I played it, though. No idea. No idea what happened. $240. I don't have $240 to give away. My golf mantra is finish the round with a smile on my face, hold my wallet open, and they either take or they put in, and I don't count it, and I'm happy, and I walk away. <laughs> Mark, Gooch, you said you knew. How did $80,000 change hands? So it got, so it became 40 grand at lunch and then okay. it became double or nothing at the putt. So double or nothing was 80 grand each, but they were yeah. down. So the double or nothing would have, did that putt win it or did that yes. putt? The putt wins the whole thing. So they won, they won 40 and just on that bet. So if he'd have lost it, they would have owed him it. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I couldn't probably keep... the flaw is he more or less pressed. The first bet should have still been going is what you're saying. That's probably uh, yeah. the flaw in the movie. Correct. Yes. Correct. 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 Um, so Danny, so Danny does have a great swing. When Danny and Ty are playing, they blindfold them and they they hit two wedges. They obviously skull both of them. They're not mm-hmm. hit well. Why not just take another take to where they flush one? Why do they, why do they do this? They, they, golfers are going to watch this. Danny, the first one, is sculled like you can't believe. Why don't they just take another take? Mark. Why don't they just say the spaceships in Independence Day are 100 miles wide? Why do they do that? That's such a miss. I think that's what Harold Ramis was talking about, that he watches it and just regrets that no one could swing a golf club and make it even legitimate as to what they were doing. I agree with you. Again, it's probably just a throwaway movie at the time. Didn't realize we'd be watching this thing 100 times and quoting it. But it is the flaw of the movie, right? Of the golf. Story. Did this movie invent music on the golf course? Tom, you already talked about it. Is Did this invent it? And why did it take so, I guess, technology, I guess, is the answer. Did this invent music on the golf course? We skipped right over most memorable scene. And that is literally my favorite scene in the whole movie. As Mark will know, I say, so what? So let's stay all the time on the golf course. And I start dancing. I blare the music and dance all the time. And you guys were talking about guys in the background. My favorite it's thing is, is it's Wang amazing. dancing in the back. Wang dancing in the background. I thought you were going another way. When Smales throws his club from the green, they look back at the foursome, and the guy that's dressed in all black, I forget the doctor, he chucks Dr. his Beaver. club for no for no reason. Just chucks oh, it for no reason. Yeah, he does. You probably didn't even see it. Um, <laughs> they don't – why don't they just – Maybe just inspect the piece of poop before you drain the entire pool. <laughs> Scoop it up with a net. Just take a look at it. You're going to be able to see what it is. But it seems like a lot of work. They could have. They could. And I also thought Lacey's dive, dive would have been better. Everybody's watching her. It's a very average dive. Very. I thought she would have had a rip entry, like mm. these Chinese divers during the Olympics now. But a very average. A very average uh, dive. So that's all my questions. I've got more, but these were the most pressing questions well here's the most pressing question of the movie none of you brought it up bob i thought you would go there because it involved a stopwatch and looking at rules the last putt should not have counted they did not take the rules into account i'll give you the rules after you make a putt you have a reasonable amount of time to approach the ball and then 10 seconds from the time that ball stops on the lip 48 seconds pass so i give you this question, the putt should not have counted. It would have taken too long. He was only about 15 feet from the hole, so he puts it up there. Oh, I miss it. Give him maybe 10, 15 seconds to get up there. Now you got 10 seconds. We're at about 25, max 30. 48 seconds doesn't go in. Judge Smales, God rest his soul, has a claim to that money that he had to pay to Rodney Dangerfield. So wait, so good- you actually timed it, Mark? Was yes. it less than 48? Okay. It was, it was actually 48 seconds from the time it sits on the lip so the things go blowing up and then it falls into the cup. 
not 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 good. No, it's not good. You're right. It's a great point. It's a great point, and I'm sick to my stomach that I didn't notice it. It's my fault. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Bob, what kind of golfer do you think John Creasy would be? Well, <laughs> a lot of golf is mental, right? Now, I, I, the mental capacity that I've got on the golf course is so frail that it doesn't really matter what the other guy is doing or hitting. I'm going to mentally break down somewhere in that round, but just the intimidation factor of Creasy, I think he's, I think he's going a hundred and Oh, I don't think people are going to have the stones to take it to him. So great golfer and uh, a man on fire wins yet again, Mark. Thank you for asking. You got it. You got it. All right, guys, we're going into some categories, some awards. These should be fun to see who gets all of these. We're starting with the Matthew McConaughey award for the best scene stealer of the movie. Now the, the movie's dominated by these main cast guys, but all sorts of dudes are popping in. They're popping out. Some like Wang, you don't even really see again. So he's a tremendous opportunity for this one right here. Gooch, we're going to let you start it off. Who gets the scene stealer award? Dr. Beaver, hands down, Dr. Beaver. And, and is Dr. Beaver really his name? It's a great name. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, just stick a tube down her nose and I'll be there in four or five hours. Um, <laughs> might be, it might be a change, a nice change from jury old Manhattan when he <laughs> shocks himself getting out of the water with his beeper. Yes. <laughs> How about a tote for me with the young kids? Um, uh, him and Ty Webb, uh, you might be, uh, you, you're supposed to be the man to beat this year in the, in the, um, in the club championship you just have to keep beating yourself. And then even though I know he doesn't do it when Ty puts him in the headlock during the fight scene, it, it's, yes. for me, it's hands down. Every scene with Dr. Bieber, awesome. Love Dr. Bieber. It's a Bieber. good one. It's a good yeah. one. I, I love Dr. Bieber as well. But, uh, the, the absolute winner here is somebody we've talked a little bit about already, Porterhouse. The clubhouse. <laughs> uh, he's only in, like, I think, two scenes, basically. The, the massage, the inexplicable... <laughs> Clubhouse massage going and then just gleefully grinding those cleats after hearing the racist joke. And he's just, he's just angry. He just, the guy plays that so well. Like that is acting 101. Or no, that, that's acting like 301. Like that, <laughs> just high level acting. And then he's the guy running the action on Spalding, picking his nose and whether he's going to win it. Like he's just, you know, he, you can tell that guy is like the, the straw that stirs the drink of Bushwood Country Club. Um, and, uh, I, I think every country club probably has like a guy just, you know, he's the, he's the man behind the scenes that, that you've got to be plugged in with and Porterhouse is the guy. I, uh, I, I love every scene he's in and, and he's the shocking. Nobody went with Spalding. Spalding is incredible. Some of just the, obviously some of the main scenes with him are funny, but when he's at the dinner table and he leans over, he says, Hey, are you going to eat that fat? <laughs> it's a he and and just the booger scene is awesome and then the vomit scene is although i don't like vomiting him just just banging back the leftovers and then throwing up in that porsche's sunroof is awesome there was a couple honorable mentions that same scene i thought a good it might have been did dr beeper sit in the porsche yeah. and Okay, that's so that's a good vote for Dr. Beeper. I also like the guy that gets run over, the black guy in the rowboat that gets run over by by Al's boat. He's just in it for a split second. His eyes go way out, just jumps off of it. It was a lot of good honorable mentions, but surprised nobody said Spalding. Yeah, a lot of good choices there. I mean, I initially I was going to go with Denunzio in honor of Colucci. I mean, it, I was just felt like I was watching Tom hanging out at the pool there, the Speedo. But I went with, and Joe Bay mentioned him earlier, just because it's a name I'll say on the golf course a bunch, Mr. and Mrs. Haverkamp. Love yeah. their a little oh. scene there. I went with them for the scene stealer. So that just shows you the depth there. Everybody went with somebody else in that. All right. Look, Bobby, we had a little controversy last week on the Best Parent, Worst Parent Award. Our guy, Ryan Reynolds, in Deadpool, claimed that Liam Neeson was a bad parent. Now, we have always called this the Liam Neeson Award for the best parent. Can I still keep that as the name, Bobby? Or do we need to, we, do we have to rename it? Are we going with Deadpool or us? No, we're going with Deadpool. He's not a great parent. He's not a great, he's very reactive as a parent. You got to be proactive, right? When they're babies, you gotta, you gotta block off the stairs before they go. You know, if your baby tumbles down the stairs, but you reach and catch them, that doesn't make you a great parent. You should have put the fence up first. He's not a great parent. I wouldn't say he's the worst. He's not replacing Darth Vader no. as the worst parent. 
but he's not the best parent. So we are, we are on the hunt. It's not as easy as you think. There's not one person out there as the best parent. Gooch, I think you thought you had a, a replacement. Didn't you say that or no? There's two obvious choices. Either the Rocky, (laughs) either the Rocky Balboa best parent one for being married to freaking Adrian that long, but (laughs) But also the great speech he gives to his son and Rocky Balboa about getting knocked down, getting back up. Or or you can pick between the two you like the most, the Pete Mitchell Maverick Best Parent Award. <laughs> obvious for obvious reasons. He tries okay. to raise okay. a kid right, that's Mark, not even right, his. Mark, Mark, we don't have any. Go ahead. We'll figure something out. He's not <laughs> he's he's not being serious. He doesn't he doesn't care. Go ahead. Go to the next Rocky one. Rocky Balboa slash Pete no. Mitchell. No, I don't know if that will we'll take it under advisement i've got an opportunity eugene levy jim's dad from american pie the best parent award the worst that, parent award will stay for darth vader so the best parent let's start with that joe bay who was the best parent in caddyshack well let me just point out gooch just staying on brand as always i, I, I love it you know you, <laughs> hey, when you when you got that note you stay on <laughs> 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 Yeah, the, the Jordan Bears go for Best Parent Award for this movie. <laughs> uh, I had a tough time with this one. I mean, God, these, there was a lot of just people that would be miserable parents. I, I gave it to Danny Noonan's parents. Um, they're raising, four, by my count, 14 kids in that house, <laughs> and they seem to be doing just fine. Uh, you know, they're teaching the value of the dollar. They're out there at the county tournament while taking pictures of uh, the win. They're involved. You know, that's what you want parents to be. They're, they're, they're keeping the kids alive in a, in a not a great uh, field. I'm going to give them the win. There you go. Mr. and Mrs. Noonan. Tommy? I'm actually giving it to Danny because <laughs> I – well, so Danny, he's got a plan. He's got a job. He's trying to save his money to go to college. Right. He cheats. He cheats yeah. on his current girlfriend. Yep. Keep going. He's not, married yet. He's not married yet. Doing all oh, the things. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, then it, it doesn't it, matter. So I'm going with Danny Noonan. Terrible Noonan. choice. It's just such a Noonans terrible are choice. cleaning up, Bobby. That's such a terrible choice. Maggie's the best. Maggie's the best parent because she chose, she wasn't going to abort that kid. I'm very pro-life. I'm not afraid to say, it. I don't think that's uh, controversial. She could have, you know, in that day and age, she said, she's going to keep it. So Maggie, not in the greatest financial situation, not ready to do it, maybe have protected sex. That's a good choice. That's a good option. But she was pregnant. She thought she was pregnant. She's going to have it. In a slim field, the Bob Posadic Best Parent Award goes to Maggie. Tanks for Norton, Danny. Tanks. And Maggie might be a hoe because she says she's not even sure it's his kid. Now, Bob's big question. We'll talk about that. Nice. I don't think there I don't think there was, but but we'll we'll get to that. We'll relitigate that. <laughs> moving forward <laughs> nice call out there gooch that was a good a good call out by you look i'm always leaning towards the guy with the most cash in the movie that would lean you towards rodney dangerfield's character but look <laughs> yeah. Ty webb owns two lumber yards all mm. he does is seem to play golf he's chevy chase he's got a cool little pad there it's a little messy decorated by benny hana but i'm going with ty webb as the yeah. best parent he- he Cash. had a he had an uncashed seventy thousand dollar check. Many so of them. he's many many of them. Yeah. yeah, several of them. All right, no debating that Darth Vader is the worst parent in history. So we're going to find out who gets the award. Look, if best parent was a slim field, we got a pretty depth. We got a lot of depth here on the worst parent award. So uh, Gooch, you're going to lead us off here. The worst parent. Cash it, she might be the worst parent and the first parent. It's Lacey because she's bone sucking trailer trash. Wow. <laughs> Agreed. Amen. Amen to that. That's two votes. I'll just interject right now. Lacey Underall, look, three. Great, great performance three. by her. Hit, three. hit me. Hit three. me. Three Jumbe. for Lacey. A- anything else? If, if there is one complaint I have about the podcast, and there is only one, <laughs> it would be slut shaming. You guys, <laughs> you got a list on these women that are just out trying to have a good time. Uh, Lacey Underwood is an angel. <laughs> um, the worst parent, the Darth Vader worst parent is Carl, the groundskeeper. The guy is a freaking absolutely a criminal. Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't let that guy in the same state as my children. Uh, 
Lacey Underall, I mean, I'm not <laughs> looking for a new wife, but Lacey Underall is, uh, you know, if she's interested, we're, we're having a conversation. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if I kill all the golfers, they'll throw me, they'll put me in jail, throw away the key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, this guy is a sexual criminal. There is no doubt about that. Um, okay. And he leaves the bishop electrocuted and presumed dead on the on the green. Like, I didn't say a- he I didn't say he wasn't in the conversation. I just chose Lacey. I don't know why you're yelling at me. I mean, there's it, I, don't, I don't know why you're yelling at me. I'm getting a little fired up here. <laughs> You know what's One funny my... about the, the bishop? For many, many years, I thought he died on that putting green. It wasn't until probably within the last 10 years that I realized he, he lived. And he, he's in later on in, in a scene. I always thought he had uh, passed away there. But look, Joe Bay, you're not alone. Best parent, worst parent is typically where Bob gets a little emotional. He takes it very, very seriously. It can fall off the rails. Where it doesn't fall off the rails, and Bob, you're going first by popular demand, the eBay Award. The item from Caddyshack that you would most want to bid some money on if you saw it on eBay, what is it? I want the scorecard from the last match <laughs> and see how they crossed out, you know, how they crossed out Al's name and got Danny and if it's different and how they tallied all these bets. That's what I want. I want that in in a frame on the mantle. The last scorecard would be awesome. With a bushwood wow. pen with a bushwood pencil. That hmm. would be very, very cool. That's pretty good, Joe Bay. Any counter to that? That that is good. And uh, and, and Bob, I, I I feel like I know you pretty well, and I I tried so hard to guess what you might pick on this because as as all loyal podcast listeners know, Bob has his uh, 60th birthday coming up this week, and I'm going <laughs> to see him on his birthday. And so I went out on a limb and I found something on eBay to buy for you that I really hoped was going to be the thing you would buy, and it's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry to have the scorecard, Bobby, but uh, but you are now the owner of a hat that should come with a free bowl of soup. And it, hey, it looks good on you. Now, I am wearing that on Friday. I don't care if it's a. I don't. Uh, hopefully, Charlie's okay with that. And I, if I know Charlie, he'll be fine with that. Oh, I will wear that Friday. I will wear that Friday. <laughs> you're the best. Great there, man. Happy New Year. You're the best, man. That's awesome. <laughs> so let, let me jump in real quick because that's another vote for that. When Joe Bay was telling me about that, he didn't tell me what it was, but I figured that's what it was. So I picked the hat that looks good on you hat. Tommy? What, so when you when you look that up, is it the did you Google Caddyshack Smales hat? Because it looks just like it, or did you just get lucky? Uh, I, I did Google that, and there's a, a million options. Oh, and, okay, okay. Uh, in true Joe May fashion, I bought the most expensive one. And it's actually like, it's actually like a very nice one. I mean, it feels great. It looks great. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see where. In true Joe May fashion, I got the most expensive one. <laughs> uh, Tommy, what are you going with? So, so I guess Joe gets the Rudy Sack Award for the podcast a lifetime because that was a pretty good moment. Uh, awesome. Bob, happy happy birthday coming up, but your answer was awful. And okay. you lose okay. points on your own podcast if that's even possible. How can I it not it. be Billy Baru? How can everyone not want Billy Baru? There that is nothing more than you want than Billy Baru. And to pull off the knitted sock and every, the cover of the whole thing. And every, come on. It's Billy Baru. You that's guys a great are all one. simpletons. Yep. Uh, done. It's, a, it's, a, it's a good if – you, if you didn't have such an arrogant attitude, I'd give you credit. It's a good one. <laughs> but uh, – Follow up. Did Judge Smales have too many clubs in his bag? Because clearly he's not putting with Billy Baru throughout the round. Pulls that out on the 18th. I'm guessing that's probably over the 14 club limit. Bob, did you happen to count the clubs in his bag, or did that? I I Martin? thought I did research. I've got pages and pages of research, and I I didn't get it, Mark. I didn't get it. But thanks for calling me out. You knew I didn't have it, but thanks for calling mm-hmm. me out. I appreciate that. All right, so not only did the last putt not count because it took too long, probably Judge Smales counterbalances that by playing with. Too many clubs. All right, Bobby, just one for you. One of my favorites, the Terrence Howard Award, given to the person who makes the worst decision in the movie. Who would that be? Well, I I, I thought I wanted to go comedy, but I want to go, you don't let Danny take his spot. You you put up a fight. The worst decision is letting Danny play. How is that the rule that they can select anyone there? It's just a, a horrible decision that cost him 80 large at the end of the day. Bad decision. 
Bad decision indeed. Tommy, this one just for you. You have outdone yourself in your two appearances with Halloween costume. First with Goose and Top Gun, and then one of the deputies out there in the woods fighting John J. Rambo uh, in First Blood. So we're going to give you the honors. Halloween costume, Caddyshack. So I, I could pull this off. And so a couple things about this. So one, I could pull it off. Two, I don't know if everyone would know, but I don't know if I'd care. And also, it was one of my questions in the movie. Why is Denunzio dressed like a pimp during the golf tournament? So my <laughs> Halloween costume would be Denunzio flicking cigarette and all. So black pants, red shirt, unbuttoned, black golf glove, and flicking <laughs> cigarettes. I'd need to, one, I have to start smoking. And two, I would start, at the whole party, I would be flicking cigarettes at people. That would be my house. I don't know if everyone would know, but I'd have a good time. So think Pip and Ho for the three of us who are there. Mm, I can yes. pull off. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. that's a good one. That's a good one. I need that Halloween costume in my veins, straight in my veins, Tommy. I need to see that the next time we're together. All right, it's time, Bob. I know you've been building up. This has been a big, big moment in all the podcasts, and I'm sure you've been excited for this one. Bob's big question. This one is is directly for Gooch. Is there a category that – I just wrote this one in. Is there a category we could think up that Rocky wouldn't be the answer? <laughs> Yeah, uh, biggest pussy non-American communist. <laughs> Best parent, Rocky. Oh, boy. So I had this one written down, and shame on me. I thought, I, again, I thought I did a lot of research. I said, you know, what happens when the bishop is found dead on 18? You're telling me he doesn't die? No, doesn't die. <laughs> Where did you see him again? Where did you see him again in the movie? In the bar. Yeah. Yeah. So he's bar. in the bar and, and he's, yeah. But this is not going to endear him to you, Bob. But he yeah. now does not believe in God anymore. <laughs> it, really? Never ask, never ask a sailor if he wants a drink. Yes. Yeah. Holy cow. Uh, all right. Joe Bay. I know, you know, in the northeast corner, northwest corner of Connecticut. There wasn't a lot of money to go around. I'm sure you had a job serving tables. Ever eat food or drink a drink that was on a customer's plate as you were bringing it back to the kitchen to bust the table? Shout out to the NWC boys, first of all. Where you don't lose your girl, you just lose your turn. Uh, <laughs> we like to say in the Northwest Quarter. But I I knew you were going to ask me this question. We didn't talk about this, but I, I knew you were going to ask me this. We did not. I promise. So... I could go on for days about eating <laughs> uneaten food off people's plates. I, mean, I, I worked at the Inn Lake and Inn. I would get maybe three tables a night, and I would crush uneaten food. Every um, interestingly, and I also would, we would go to the um, uh, West Main Cafe, and he was constantly drinking undrank, unfinished drinks, wounded soldiers, and eating more cigarettes by mistake than I did. But I think my favorite story about that is I was I was in uh, Switzerland after college. I was uh, like back around Switzerland with back around Europe with some friends, and I ran out of money like halfway through the trip. I had nothing to eat. I had a jar of Nutella and a loaf of bread, and that was a play, and I just pleaded for for uh, for food and i once was standing by the garbage can waiting for people to bring their food to the garbage in this place in switzerland and this girl brought a beautiful plate of spaghetti she had taken like one bite out of it and she brought it up and was about to throw it away and i was like hey let me grab that and she hands it to me had a cigarette butt right in the middle of it. Mm. I hate it, but it, it was not as good as it would have been uh, without the cigarette butter. So to answer your question, yes, uh, many, many times. A resounding yes. I didn't know where that question was going to go, if you were going to be real you know, coy. I know probably all of us. Gooch, ever done that? Yeah, so I waited and bartended for a lot of years. And <laughs> all Joe, everything Joe says times two. Yeah. All the yeah. time, all the time. You could, yeah. So part of the trick, Joe, is you cut off the part that parts that kind of if they've got bites or like even a burger, you cut the bites away, right, and then you eat the small part of the burger, things like that. There you go. Yeah. You yeah, see, I, you, I see, you 
Yeah, you I, see how Joe Bay's agreeing with you? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, that's what you do. Yeah. Sure, that's what you do. But he never did that. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't as classy as Gooch. I didn't cut it away. I just ate from the other end. And had no, um, you know, <laughs> if it's a half eaten pickle, I can eat the other half and just get to, like, a little bit. And try. Oh, well, God. Mark, I'm, Mark, I'm not obviously going to you on this next one. We've got a live one here. Joe Bay, ever eaten a booger? <laughs> Uh, for, it's been four years and three months I've been since your last booger since, do you have like a chip do you have a four year three month chip eating booger so no as kids you guys weren't into eating boogers that's one thing I can't and now I've I, now I've never eaten a booger I wouldn't be afraid to admit it but I've you know if you're in bed and you're looking at your phone and you pick your nose to get a little boogie and I've had one fall on my lip and it's just it's just terrifying it's terrifying the feeling of it is terrifying so Gooch, ever eat a booger? Well, we all ate boogers as kids, but I'm going to tell a story that's way too embarrassing. I can't believe I'm going to give it to the internet. Uh, when when I was in college, I was at a party with a bunch of my high school friends. We all went back home. We were at a huge party. And one of my buddies, who I played football with and hung out with, he gave me a hug. And as he hugged, he had picked a booger, and he wrapped around, and he put it on my cheek, and I didn't know it was there. And there's pictures of me at the party with a booger on my cheek <laughs> that my buddy put on my cheek as a joke. Oh, man. So can, you booger- imagine, can you imagine the COVID that that thing had on it? Can you imagine yes. all the COVID that you got that time? But we all uh, have boogers. Ma- Mark, where's the weirdest place you've ever thrown up? Hmm. Weirdest. I know all these questions should go to Joe Bay. I, I know there's a great story in my, in my screen. He's bottom right on my Hollywood squares. Joe Bay, just know I wanted to go to you first. I know it's an incredible story. Mark, anything, anything good? Nothing. Or will you pa- I, I would call a car weird. I mean, I've thrown up in a car, you know, but I, I don't really have a good story about throwing up at some odd play. Joe Bay's, his eyes are bulging out of his head. Maybe you go to him. Joe Bay, what do we got? I'm like the guy in the little uh, robo that's about to get hit by uh, an <laughs> No, I can't, I can't think of like a like one good place, but any of my friends from college will tell you that I have thrown up almost everywhere <laughs> in so many awful situations. Like I, I, I developed this thing my senior year where I couldn't stop throwing up. And probably had to do with the fact that I was in my senior year of college and was, was drinking too much and stuff. But uh, I mean, I've thrown up basically every way you can think of. Everywhere. Like, I, oh, I mean, you name it. <laughs> I, I've, I've thrown up there several times. Uh, I a puke bag around in my back pocket because I knew I was going to throw up at some point. Jeez, I'm glad you got over that because we could not be friends. And with my fear of, of vomit. I, I was actually wondering about when you when you saw the guy puke, when you saw uh, Spaulding puke in the – I'm sorry, when you saw him drink the cigarette, did you almost throw up? No, no. But when he throws up, I'm not watching. I'm not – I'm doing one of these. I'm not watching that. No, no, not watching that. Tommy, I once knew a guy could have been a great golfer, gone pro. <laughs> All he needed was time, practice, decided to go to college and said four years did, did pretty well. End of his four years last semester, he was kicked out. You know what for? Night putting. Putting at night with 15-year-old daughter of the dean. You know who that guy was, Danny? Take one good guess. Bob Mitch Hope. Kumstein. No, that guy was Mitch Cumstein. My question to you is, can you spell Cumstein? I can. C-U-M-S-T-E-I-N. And I can go one step further. <laughs> you ready for this? I don't know if that's it right. Is, yeah, sure. Go ahead. It is right because I looked it up. It's na 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 ta 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 nu 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 pa 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 ta 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 ta. We've all been doing it wrong all these years. So mm. I had subtitles on. I went back five times to get it all right, and I wrote it down every single time. So again, five nas, five tas, five news, five pas, five tas. Did you write it five oh. times every time, or did you just write it once, like times five? I went, nah, and then I went back again. Then I did all the toss, and then I went back again. <laughs> then I did all the news, and then I went back again. Then I did all the pause, and I went back again. So, so Danny has a putt. That totally he... improvised, right? It's got to be totally impro- improvised. It has to be. Yeah. He's also, to be. Mark, as you and I have done many times, in his bare feet. We have golfed in our bare feet we have many times. Grounding. Right? Get to the earth. Yes. That's very good for you. Yes. Yeah. 
Mark, this question is specifically for you. We know Danny hits the clutch putt at the end of the at the end of the at the end of the tournament. It's illegal. We know this, but Mark, have you ever hit a clutch putt in your entire life? Oh yeah, I made oh, a yeah. uh, a putt oh, to that... win a tournament at uh, Aliqua Lakes. A tough day. Like, we're all, on the 18th hole. We're, yeah. yeah, we're all happy for you. The comedic answer was nope, never made a clutch putt because I yeah. don't think I've ever made a clutch putt in my entire life. And I actually played competitive golf as a very young kid. I don't think I ever hit a putt to win anything. I've lost almost every golf bet I've ever had. I actually can play golf okay. Never win a bet. Never hit a clutch putt. Doesn't matter how long the uh, how long the putt is. I've never hit a clutch putt. But we're so happy for you, Mark, that you hit that clutch putt at Aliqua Lakes. Thank you. Here's the question. It's yes or no. Did Maggie sleep with another guy? Or was that just her way of trying to dig at Danny because she didn't like the way? Tom, did she sleep with another guy? Slut. Okay. Joe Bay. Yes, but not a slut. Just a just an <laughs> I'm going to do something there. Mark, did yeah. she? Yes. Mm, I think no, because she got my best parent award. That's it. Bob's big questions were good. Joe Bay, obviously the clear Jeez. winner of right. those questions. Bye. Clear winner. Nervous to hang around him anymore. Great job, Bobby. All right, the Rudy Sack Award. Most emotional moment of the movie, Joe Bay, what gave you all the feels? For me, it's going to go back to just my love of these two guys. And as Mark mentioned earlier, the fact that it's their only time together on screen. Uh, it's the, the Carl Spencer and Todd Webb moments. And, you know, it's a long scene. It's not like an emotional scene. But it just, it's just one that you watch and say, this is history. This is uh, this is two heavyweights just out there punching together and, and giving it their best shot. Uh, and that, to me, like that, that tugs at my heartstrings. I love that. That's, that's the most emotional moment. Love it. Tommy, you're an emotional guy. Rocky Balboa make an appearance in this movie? Tug at your heartstrings? I, I think it's the Bishop and Carl right up until he gets struck by lightning. It's, all, it's, it's, it's a minute of emotional and then right. So right up until he gets struck by. I went with that one as well. That got me, that got me going Tommy. So two votes on that. Bobby round it out. Listen, I'm going to change the rules here. It's not the movie, but it's what's associated with the movie. And Joe, and Tommy's right. It was that moment between me and Joe Bay when he pulled out that hat. I will forever associate that with the movie Caddyshack. My Rudy sack award. Good call, Tommy. (laughs) That's the first ever Rudy Sacco where for something had happened on the pod. Excellent. Yep. All right. This guy's history, baby. Uh, yes. Right. Did the movie need a different ending? I've already given you my thoughts. The putt should not have counted, although that would be pretty not as fun, I guess, right? Because we don't want Smales to win. We want uh, we want Ty Webb and Danny Noonan to win. But, Tommy, we need a different ending here. Oh. Is there a better way to end a movie with, hey, everybody, we're all going to get laid. It's <laughs> it's the perfect ending to a movie. So maybe the putt goes in. I agree. I'd written that down, too, as kind of my B. Maybe the putt goes in. But I think that line is awesome. Uh, so look, to, just to go back in podcast history, <laughs> during the Shawshank Redemption episode, Mark wanted the alternate ending to be that Morgan Freeman snitched on Tim Robbins for escaping prison. Do we all remember this? Uh, that that, that, that wasn't on. what he wanted. It's what Chat GPT well, said could be. He, he proposed right. that you. alternate ending. Now Thank he you. proposes that Danny Newton's putt gets disqualified <laughs> because of a rule of golf. <laughs> and he said, it might not be as fun. <laughs> Joe. Joe Bay is hitting his stride. I know yeah. we're going over time, Mark, but Joe Bay is hitting his stride. Just let him cook. Go ahead. Finish your thought, Joe Bay. Pause. I mean, can we ever trust this guy to give an alternate ending to a movie? <laughs> the only alternate ending, and we, this is something we haven't even talked about. We, well, this will be on number two of this podcast because we're definitely going into a, a sequel. The gopher dies a horrible and grisly death at the end of the movie. Kill <laughs> that gopher. Nothing. His head explodes. His head explodes like a Quentin Tarantino movie, just blood everywhere. It's yeah, that's Nightmare on Elm Street style. We see this animal die. I'm not for animal cruelty, but uh, yeah, I mean, do you know what the 
punishment is for animal cruelty in this state? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it's <laughs> probably pretty stiff. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the gopher should should the, the movie could change if the gopher just went. Like, forget the ending and just get rid of the gopher in time. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, Joe Bay. You swayed me. I had something else, but I think that's right. He gets him in the crosshairs, blows his head off, and the putt sinks. I think that's the ending. Well, let's let's have good. the conversation right now because we haven't really gotten into it. We'll talk about Bill Murray's Hall of Fame plaque. Number one, do you guys like Bill Murray's performance here? And two, did you like the whole gopher thing? Tommy, Bill Murray's performance and the gopher. Where do you stand on it? Gopher's irrelevant. No, his best. So are we in Hall of Fame right now? No, I'm just curious, kind of just like to the ending point, because I think the gopher thing is yeah. kind of goofy and the blowing up and all that kind of takes away from the movie a little bit. Just on that for right now. Yeah. So I'm not really. So going back an hour ago, whatever it was, I'm not a Bill Murray guy. I love Stripes. That's really about it. Stripes mm-hmm. is about it. So gophers are relevant to the movie. But it's also if you I bet you if you ask most of your listeners, minus the one girl who never watched Rocky. Uh, the one scene that everyone would remember the most is the gopher dancing, right? That's what everyone remembers about this movie. I don't know if everyone, that's what they remember about it. That's the big part of this movie. That song comes on. Everyone does the gopher dance. I'm all right. Comes on. All right. All right. All right. Bob thoughts on Bill Murray and the whole gopher thing. No, no, the gophers, gophers are relevant. I agree with Gooch, but he is, he is great in this. I mean, this is, well, well, we'll talk about an Hall of Fame plex. Yeah, let's let's transition into it right now. Let's well, one we'll knock out of the way because we've already covered Chevy Chase. Now, I don't know if anybody's opinion differed after seeing this, but when Joe Bay joined us for vacation, look, it comes down to three. Not many dudes have three characters like Chevy Chase. He's got Fletch, he's got Ty Webb, he's got Clark W. Griswold. We gave it to Clark W. Griswold because Fletch is unbelievable, Ty Webb's unbelievable, but Griswold is kind of in more movies, and when it just sort of snapped judgment. You think of Clark Griswold. Has anybody changed their opinion on Chevy Chase? No, I'm saying no. All right. I think it's Clark. I agree. I agree. So Bill Murray, here are your choices for Hall of Fame plaque. What do you think of them? Kind of snap judgment. Carl Spackler and Caddyshack. Ghostbusters, which probably his biggest, most famous film. Stripes, Meatballs. And then his later years, What About Bob was kind of like a breakthrough for him to kind of switch it over to that Joe Bay, Bill Murray, snap your fingers. What, what do you think of first? It's a tough one. It is a tough one. I, I'm going to go. What about Bob? I love what about Bob? Uh, I, I mean, he's, I think, I think I agree that it's like, it was sort of where he flipped a little bit from just like a comedic hand to a funny sort of respectable guy. Um, yeah. I mean that or stripes guy. I, him walking down the street singing one of these days, everything that I want is going to be mine. I mean, that's, that's kind of what sticks in my mind for, for different reasons. But uh, yeah, I, I would, I'll go one. One, one for what about Bob, Bob? Well, I mean, if you just went through it and it's between, you know, those two, what about Bob and stripes? It's, it's Carl Spackler by a landslide. Um, I think that's what it is. I think when I close my eyes and think of him, I think of Carl Spackler. Tom break the, not a tie. I'm just, you have a third opinion. Yeah, it's research department. Fun. Research department taking a break on this one. So it is stripes for sure. But Groundhog Day, <laughs> Lost in Translation. I think he won an Academy Award for Lost in Translation, didn't he? Yeah, I don't. I'm just kind of. What do you think? I look. I love Groundhog Day. I know Bob doesn't like it, so I didn't bring it up. I feel like it's kind of those earlier ones. Scrooge is better either. than both of those movies. Scrooge is better than both of those. Bob doesn't like Groundhog Day. Yeah, it, it's a it's fine. And are we being sensitive to Bob here? We're not bringing up things that Bob likes. Vomit. Oh, it's emotional. Ground. It's emotional. Okay. Okay. You Just making sure. You can go in there. Yeah. I don't Thanks, think Mark. we've solved it. I don't think we've solved it. Uh, Ted Knight, Judge Smales, just an all-time performance. He's really a TV star. I mean, he's Ted Baxter on Mary Tyler Moore show, Too Close for Comfort. He's on those shows for a long, 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 long time. I am imagining the four of us think of him as Judge Smales, though. Correct. He's Judge Smith. Yeah. The only one, the only one old enough to remember the Mary Tyler Moore show is Tom, so he may think differently. But he is for sure. To, I mean, he's amazing. So, so you read all the stuff about he had a hard time with the whole cast because he was a serious yeah. Yeah. actor and he yeah. wanted to act. Serious, and he was one of the few who read every one of his lines. Um, uh, but Mary, he's Ted Baxter, and, and wow. amazing, amazing, amazing is, is that role 
far wow. better than Joe Smales. Wow. And imagine what he was what he was going through as just a human and like a normal human being <laughs> actor, while everybody else on the set was dead. Out of their mind on drugs, just getting gassed every <laughs> minute of every day. <laughs> just like trying to be just a just a okay person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that had to have been that had to have been tough being the one guy trying to play the straight part uh, in a movie. All right, last guy, Rodney Dangerfield. Look, Bob and I love him as Thornton Mellon. I mean, we probably like that movie more than most people. Look, Big Al Cervic and Caddyshack, <laughs> or so it's those two. It's Thornton Mellon or Caddyshack, or is it just I don't get no respect? Yeah. That's on the Hall of Fame plaque. I mean, what do you think, Bob? I think that's it. It's him with his hands up, with his big buggy eyes looking at you, say, oh, "You have no respect," which he said in this movie. I think. I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, I got to tell you, another one of the greatest lines ever from Back to School that I say all the time: "Bring a pitcher of beer every seven minutes until someone passes out, and then bring bring one every ten minutes." And I say, <laughs> I still. I'm a 50 something year old man. I say it every time when I go in a bar. So I, <laughs> you know, it's a toss. I, I think if you're, if you're talking about Hall of Fame plans, so like back to school, amazing. Love that movie. Yeah. But if you can't go with his stand up because he did his stand up for what, like 25 years before this movie. Mm-hmm. And this movie was what made us know him as a stand, right? Like yeah. this movie did more for him than, than, you know, for anybody else. I don't think any yeah. of us really probably know Rodney Dangerfield unless he, unless he's in this movie. So I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna say it's, yep. uh, it's Caddyshack. Right? It's a good yeah. point. It's a good point. All right, Bobby, what Hall of Fame plaques you got for me? All right, I'll I'll call on you since we're I know we're we're getting deep into the podcast here. Joe Bay, best SNL character, best SNL cast member of all time: Will Ferrell, Eddie Murphy, Kristen Wiig, Bill Hader, Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, Chevy Chase, Tracy Morgan. I'll stop with those. Uh, Chris Kratan, Corky Ramon. <laughs> done. That's mark it down. It's done. Yep. All right. Best lick of a body part in a movie. So that slut Lacey has Danny's hand and he's got the saliva line and he just, she just licks his palm. It's disgusting. I could imagine it's hot and sweaty and salty, but you got that. You've got Ferris Bueller, obviously, when you're bending over, moaning and wailing, you lick your palms. It's a little childish and stupid, but then again, so is high school. You've got Jabba the Hutt licking Princess Princess Leia. It's pretty gross. Nightmare on Elm Street, the tongue comes out of the phone in the dream and licks that lady. Um, and then you've got the orderly licking Sarah Connor in T2. Best <sighs> lick of a body part, Mark. The best lick is Ferris Bueller. The worst is the, the last one in Terminator 2. Bad. That's bad. I agree. I agree. All right. Most quoted movie of all time. Caddyshack, Forrest Gump, Godfather, Fletch, Ferris Bueller, Anchorman, Pulp Fiction. Knowing I probably missed a ton. Tom, what's the most quoted movie of all time? It's got to be Caddyshack. Didn't I we think just you're right. That? Yeah. I think we did. It's science. <laughs> It's science. I think you. I think you might be right. Joe Bay, best sports comedy movie. You've got this: Sandlot, Happy Gilmore, Talladega Nights, Bull Durham, Kingpin, Cool Runnings. Hint, hint. Dodgeball, Major League, Slapshot, White Men Can't Jump, and Tin Cup. Can I go back and talk about licks in movies? <laughs> <laughs> hold on a sec hold on mark do you have the bylaws there yeah we'll allow it we'll check the bylaws if it's not allowed we'll just edit it out of it but go ahead go ahead joe Bay. do you have a question well, i just remember we're trying to keep this uh no, we don't want an explicit rating on here so i'm not going to mention flash yeah that's a good that's a good choice there's been other there has been i will concede there have been other licks in movies <laughs> i'll concede that as a as a, an avowed hockey guy, I gotta put slap shot up there. I also love Major League so much. So so for me, it's Caddyshack, Major League, or Slap Shot. Uh, it's gonna be Caddyshack. Caddyshack is the is the funniest of those for sure. Yeah. I think that's the funniest sports movie. Ever. I think you're right, Mark. Best fictional golfer: Happy Gilmore, Shooter McGavin, Cosmo Kramer. <laughs> Dwarf on golf. Remember that guy? He had a dwarf. He was on his knees. 
Tim uh, David Sims from Tin Cup, Chubbs Peterson, Al Servic, Ty Webb, Danny Noonan, Roy McAvoy, or the Dalai Lama. <laughs> Had you not thrown Ty Webb in there, because that's a shoe in for me to give it. A shooter McGavin is hilarious. They're supposedly making a sequel. Happy Gilmore too. He's an unbelievable Twitter follow, Shooter McGavin. But if you're throwing Ty Webb in there, I'm going Ty Webb. Best animal menace in a movie. You got this gopher, Cujo, the Velociraptor in 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 Jurassic Park, Jaws, King Kong, Godzilla, the snakes on snakes in a plane, the birds and birds, or the spiders in arachnophobia. Gooch. Best menace animal in a movie. <laughs> have you seen birds? I, I think I have. Although I thought I saw this movie and I didn't see the first five minutes of it. Don't know how I missed that one. I'm going with that. It's pretty, it's pretty Hitchcock movie. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is pretty, pretty insane. Okay. Let's just throw this one out. Well, let me get this one out of the way. The biggest tramp ever in a movie, Lacey or Jenny from Forrest Gump. Mark, who's a bigger <laughs> tramp? Wow. Lacey does a lot of work in a short amount of time. I mean, yeah, she's she does. really, she's really getting after it. But I think over the course of a career, it's Jenny Gump. Best song that equals a movie. We've done this plenty of times. I think Eye of the Tiger is going to win this, but I'm all right. Don't you forget about me, Breakfast Club. I will always love you. My heart will go on. Danger Zone. Time of my life. Footloose. Eye of the Tiger, Take My Breath Away, and What a Feeling from Flashdance. Joe Bay, you're omitted from this because you've already said your favorite song ever is Footloose. Gooch, best song equals a movie. Gonna go fly now. Over Eye that's, of the, uh, that's the, the Tiger? Oh, 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 I know. I know the song, Gooch. I yeah, know the song, on, Gooch, but you're saying that's better than Eye of the Tiger. Mark. Yeah. Bring some sanity into this world here. Best song, best movie song. Yeah, we have done this. I think we determined it was Eye of the Tiger from something, but I, let's go Danger From Top Gun, then. because Dan, yeah, yeah. Cause Danger, I think it was the Top Gun pod. I think it was yeah. the Top Gun pod. Yeah. Okay, last one. Everybody gets a chance. The last one. Funniest movie of all time. I get yelled at that, hey, you guys don't, you don't know what funny is, talking about Caddyshack, but here you go. Funniest movie ever. Everybody gets a, a vote. Caddyshack, Anchorman, Fletch, Wedding Crashers, Tommy Boy, Hangover, Old School, Super Bad, Deadpool, Step Brothers, and Vacation. Joe Bay, funniest movie of all time. Uh, dumb and Dumb. Okay. Dumb. So, no, it wasn't, but that's fine. A write in vote is fine. So, Dumb and Dumber, you think is the funniest movie of all time? Just Dumb and Dumber is the funniest movie. <laughs> it's it's amazing. I agree. I don't agree well, it's the funniest well, movie well, ever. Well, yeah, I mean, Dumb and Dumber is like, nobody's questioning. It's the funniest movie. Gooch, funniest movie of all time. I might get canceled here. History of the World, Part One. <laughs> You're just showing your age a little bit there. Oh my showing. God! Do you know Mel Brooks yet? Do you know uh, Mel Brooks yet, young man? No, I don't think I've ever seen that movie. I, I know the Holy movie. Grail is where the 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 guy the, the knights. Go ahead, Joe Bay again. Gone with the Wind had some good humor. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Blazing Saddles right behind it, but again. Yeah. Very cancel culture. Very, very cancel. So, Mark, funniest movie of all time. Man, without giving away too much of what we've got up there, I think the one I've had the most laughs over time is Anchorman. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's it, guys. You guys did great. And I think I won that category. None of you got any points. I got all the points. You were, you were definitely... On fire, we've come to the end, sadly. It's been a blast hanging out. We basically would be, what, making the turn right about now on a golf course, <laughs> kind of kind of rounding through nine, getting a beer, getting a hot dog, making our way to number 10 T. Time for the MVP of the movie. Gooch, who can this movie not live without? Al Cherbic. Hands down. Rodney Dangerfield, tough to tough to go against that. He's a tour de force, Joe Bay. Uh, I'm going to go with <laughs> instead of my heart on this one. I'll never go against Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase is the is the greatest comedic comedic actor of all time. Love the guy. The MVP of this movie is uh, is Ted Knight. <laughs> he just holds the movie together. Uh, we alluded to it earlier. Everybody else was a complete mess on this movie. 
and he was a professional and he made it happen. And it was a movie that was not in his wheelhouse and he was just hilarious. And again, the older I get, the older we all get, the, the funnier we think he is. And quite frankly, I feel like I kind of look like him right now. And uh, <laughs> uh, for me, he's, uh, he's, he's the MVP of this. You know, the way you said the question, Mark, you've never phrased it like that. Who can this movie not live without? And it's Ty Webb. I agree with, I could go, this was one of the hardest ones, but I don't think this movie is the same unless they have, they put Ryan Reynolds back. The movie is just not the same without Chevy Chase as Ty Webb. So I would say he is the MVP of this movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Ty Webb as well. Smales is unbelievable. He's better than I remember. And I, I agree with you, Joe Bay. He's kind of, you need him in there, but I, I'm always going to go with my guy, Chevy. Ty Webb is just the one-liners. The physical comedy is just is just unbelievable. Well, guys, we've said a lot. Any final words? No, no, we we have said it a lot. Mark, great job. I know the your Ajita, which a lot of people loved you talking about Ajita um, when we were watching the scene from Deadpool, Tom Colucci. But I know you're Type A. Listen, we all have our gifts. You keep this ship. You're the Judge Smales of this podcast. You keep us on the straight and narrow. And we pressed your boundaries. The MVP of this podcast, Mark Pazotic. Great job, Mark. Great nice job. job. And a, been a blast having an iconic foursome for an iconic movie. Enjoyed it, fellas. Until next time, this has been DePazcast. Podcast.